the other players will be seeing here today. So, to kick things off, we're starting to the top right-hand side of Dusk Towers, our blue Protoss player representing Junior Green Wings. It's going to be Creator. In this PVT matchup against the Terran to the bottom left-hand side, one of the Terran represent uh, one of the Terran and Chinese representatives of this monthly finals of the Doyo Star Masters, it is going to be time in the red. Okay, so today uh, there's eight matches which are taking place. Uh, four of them are going to be cast here on stream, four of them off stream. Oftentimes we do try and get those uh, extra ones um, casting. Um, we, we try and get those extra ones casted uh, kind of from replays, but this is just not going to happen today. I, they're all taking place at the same time. It's hard to get the replays. And I don't know if I can manage a lot more than four best of threes with my voice right now. So let's we'll see how it goes. However, today we're going to have Creator versus Time, not on stream Armani versus Jin. Then on stream we'll have Bjorn versus Nice. We'll also have on stream Scarlet versus Chick. We'll also have uh, Silky uh, Silky versus Yishi. I thought it was Ayasoni versus Yishi, but maybe that's changed a little bit. Either way, that's going to be a rough estimate of the four best of threes we have for you guys today. This, of course, being the first of those four. So Bjorn, Nice, Scarlet, uh, Yishi. Sony, all players you can be expecting to see throughout the day here in today's Dory Star Master Month Finals Day 1. And then we'll be bringing you guys the rest of the action tomorrow from, I imagine, the same time, so 1 p.m. CEST. So probably going to be at, um, you know, a similar time sort of tomorrow for day number two of this as we kick things off into this best of three. First best of three of the day then is going to be Creator versus Time for the PVT. And... I mean, right from the get-go, we see some fairly standard openings. We see the Nexus, you know, the Nexus down for Creator. He's gone into a Robo facility as a follow-up to this. We see out of our Terran player, well, he's actually gone into a just a very standard 1-1-1 setup after his expansion as well. Looks as though he's going to head in towards an early mine drop here of the Widow Mine already starting to build. Time just going to have a little bit of lag. Just going to uh, ask for a moment to try and fix this, and hopefully it'll be all fixed in a moment or two. So I guess that does give us a quick moment to actually just go and show you guys the um, bracket here today. So, uh, very quickly just to show you guys the bracket. This is our bracket. So again, Creative vs. Time is up. Then Armani, Jin, Bjorn, Nice, Journey, Punk, Scarlet, Chick, Sayo, Gumiho, Natural, Tapor, and Silky, Yishi. Again, we'll cast four of these around 16 matches today. The rest will be played out tomorrow. Okay, let's get back in again then and uh, continue to talk about what's going on. Because we already have a motion ship call coming across the map here. Looking to get a little bit damage done. Picks off Marine, recalls away. Gets the information that there's a 1 1 1 setup. He sees that there's no kind of extra add ons apart from that reactor on the barracks as well. And so he'll know that this is going to be a fairly standard Marine Widow Mine drop to begin the game very early on here. You're going to see a third CC coming down behind this from time as well. Which is pretty. Um, Pretty, pretty standard, it's uh, kind of a go-to for the Terran players, just trying to get the third CC up nice and quickly. A couple of Widow Mines to try and drop with Tech Lab then on the factory, and that can be for a Siege Tank to help you defend early on in the game. And we'll see this Medivac deal lift up the Widow Mines and then probably a Liberator follow-up as well. So that's what we're looking at in the early stage of the game, out of time. On the other side of the map, we have seen the Twilight Council come on up, so Creator is on that Robo Twilight setup for the early game tech. And he's on three gateways as well, so... We'll see what he wants to do from here. A lot of players love to play aggressively with the Blink Stalker play on this map because of the fact that if you can sit down this ramp, you can get a bit of a concave going back to show you on the Terran side of the map. You can sit down this ramp, get a bit of a concave going. Very hard for the Terran to attack into you and down that ramp, but very easy for you to pick off a depot or two. So that's something we might see coming out of Creator here very shortly. As we see extra racks on the way up now, and again, the first siege tank just on the way as well. First engineering base, a couple of engineering base coming down the natural. Extra gas also starting to be taken, so everything just starting to get set up here for time and towards his mid game. And the same sort of thing from Creator taking the third Nexus, his extra, you know, his first tech of the game starting to finish up. He actually uh, cleans out those widow mines, does take a little bit of damage from them. Sorry, we actually missed that. Uh, my bad, but uh, we saw a little bit of damage being done there, but nothing too major. Now, as we see, Creator. For the most part, holding off against that fairly easily. And there's that Liberator follow-up now coming in. We're looking to just try and get a few more worker kills here in this game. So that Liberator continue to come across the map. We do see a few Stalkers starting to come through the center here now. So a few stalk Stalkers starting to come through the center of the map here from Creator. And now, of course, just looking to try and see... Uh, again, just sort of pressure a little bit, maybe. We do see a War Prism out, so you can reinforce this. So I wouldn't be surprised at all to see a little bit of... Um, yeah, pretty much what, you know, exactly what we just talked about, that sort of stalker poke at the front. See a few stalkers having to warp in right now to try and come and deal with this Liberator, which has actually picked up five kills already. So, 
Redbird are doing a pretty decent job, denying some mind time as well, definitely slowing the Pearls player down. While behind this, we see the Terran player, plus one, plus one. There's extra upgrades coming up, and he's actually going to move to the low ground to hold this position. With a Siege Tank here, Medivac to heal these Marines. He's doing a pretty okay job, and these Stalkers for now will be pushed back. Tank will pull back a little bit. I'd love to see it just up on the high ground or something, just somewhere a little bit more, you know, a little bit safer. So it's not going to go down, you know, very quickly in, you know, thanks to a very quick blink in or something. So, liking to see that being pulled back. We also see them, a couple of Marauders starting to come out now as well. As we're up to two Tech Lab racks, one Reactor, and then we're going to see a couple more racks coming in. Still one spare Tech Lab over here. I'm sure we'll get that uh, being used soon. As we see, another Medivac or so, a couple more Widow Mines coming out from time. Just to come down this ramp and, uh, again, just help him to kind of hold on. We're going to see Yachtiki again, Kurede once again trying to push in here. Still no Stim Combat Shields, all 1-1 one, one for our Terran player. Nice little lift up on one of the Marauders there, keeping it alive as it falls low in health. So that's a nice little cute bit micro, which is going to, of course, help him to trade effectively throughout this. We can see Kurede still attacking and still coming to this. These steps at the front go down very quickly, though, and now it's just the Stalkers. They will begin to blink back, though, and maybe we need to see a few um, SCVs pulled into this there. The Ghost starting to come forward to do that tanking. Loving the Widowmise moving forwards, and guess what? The Stormers just used their blink. Nice little pickup on the medevac on, with the tank, and we're going to see that tank surviving for just a little while longer. Kiting around right now. It will start to be targeted down. It will not get one more shot off. I mean, this looks really bad for time, but he is sort of holding on. He's now got one more upgrade. He's very close to his uh, stim pack, so it's not as bad as it looks if he can save the third CC. Which is what this is going to be all about now. He's going to start coming down this ramp. Stimpak is seconds away. He's going to lose the third base. He's going to try and repair it. It's going to just go down. And that is, of course, Kratos trying to get out of there. He's done the damage he's been looking for. There's nothing for him that's worth sticking around for any longer. And so he's just going to back away, back home, and time. Going to be in a little bit of trouble now. I mean, losing the third CC. I mean, if he doesn't lose that third base, he's not that bad of a position. You know, he's pretty good on workers. He's got the mules to actually push him ahead in the economy. He is still equal on army. He's ahead in upgrades. He's actually got a very strong bio-based army to then go into and play with for the next few minutes of the game. And, you know, Kraid is very much so just stuck on sort of stalkers, one immortal, very, you know, very low-tech sort of units, just gateway units, basically. So this is, um, you know, just losing that third CC is the one thing which has just gone horrifically wrong here. For our uh, Terran players, that War Prism comes back in, picks up the Stalkers, despite the low health, it's still able to get out of there. This creator just pulling back home still. I mean, there's actually still not a lot back at home for creator. We've seen him start a warp in a few more units now. He's getting his extra warp gates ready to go. And that's going to make a big difference here as we see there's Medivac, so many of them. But is it going to be enough as we see these units? They're joined up together. And they are starting to move forwards, getting ready to go up this ramp into the third base in the next couple of moments. There he goes, stimming on in. And, well, they're going to find some stalkers dropping out the warpers, and I like that already. And uh, we're going to see a couple of demise boring. It's going to hit a lot of these adepts. Adepts take a lot of damage. But we will just see time lift up and leave. He's not going to push his luck. He's not going to stay for longer than he's meant to be staying as he does back away. And let's see these couple of medivacs up the right-hand side of the map, maybe try and uh, dive in towards the natural or so. There's a lot of potential as to where these medivacs could go, and, well, honestly, Kareda very out of position. He's got, not got anything in position just yet to defend the natural, and you know, there's some stalkers coming in, but, well, I mean, some stalkers coming in, but there's actually already, uh, you know, a good amount unloaded. There's a few extra depths to tank, though, and my uh, depths are just so good at tanking. It's really kind of crazy. I always, I'm still kind of just not used to how, how, how well so few kind of gateway units can actually deal with a bio force nowadays, but, um... We'll see that drop being pushed back. We're going to see a little bit of a drop coming into the main base too. Again, just keeping the Pros player busy, keeping dropping, and just keeping the Pros player distracted while he sets up into everything else in his game. You know, he's, you know, just stacking up more Marines, he's stacking up more Marauders. And this bio just doing a little bit more damage over in the main base. We're going to see another few Stalkers being warped in here. And, well, there's that push coming out through the center from Creator. Some Stalkers, Adepts, and a couple of Immortals from him attempting to come towards the front and look to see what's going on as we're going to see again this marine marauder is going to take down a pile now and power in one of these gateways the robot facility as well nice little widow mine connection on one of these adepts that mothership core getting low but not quite going down just yet as we're going to see them stalkers continuing to uh just come in and clean this up and again it's it's sort of distracting but creators still found a way to move across the map but can he really attack on in there's liberators here there's widow mines here i don't think he can there's just going to be seeing more liberators coming out now there is two medivacs left alive. Having lost a few of the medivacs earlier is a little bit painful because it means that it's quite hard for him to kind of, you know, he has to decide does he make more liberators or does he, you know, reproduce the medivacs that he's already lost as well. Big connections here in the middle lines. We're going to see seven workers going down to this. We're going to see the adepts. They do commit. Widomite actually goes off on the adepts. The rest of the army a bit slow to join in. The liberators going to start sieging up. SCVs will be pulled in to try and survive. 
As we're going to see, actually, uh, time realizing he maybe doesn't need those SCVs in there. He's holding on against this just fine right now, as we're going to see him. Well, pull him back with another one of these medevacs, and, well, here we go, coming up the ramp. We're still going to see these liberators a major part of the defense. However, they're not in position just yet. They're going to reposition right now. So are the Widow Mines. In fact, he's going to commit to this, and, then, you know, there isn't really a way out of this for Creator. He just has to go for it and keep on fighting. If two more liberators siege on up. The storm is blinked to the other side, but they just can't target down the liberators. And so, so much damage being done. That being said, there's very little bio left underneath here, but there still is bio, and that's what really matters here. As we're going to see the reinforcing stalk is pushed away, and time is going to force Creator all the way back towards the upper right-hand side of the map. He has to pull back right now, and time is having a pretty good uh, go at this right now. And well, this has been one heck of a TVP to start us off here today in the Dory Star Masters Monthly Number Four. We're going to see this bio force collecting together. Continue to head towards the upper right hand side, another Archon going to finish morphing in here, we're going to see another Adept morphing in as well. And just going to be seeing these units from Creator. What are they going to get up to? What are they going to be able to achieve as we see a little bit of a quick stim? Just going to be seeing these uh, Stalkers just being pushed back up that ramp. Liberators are going to siege up once again. The Liberators this time actually in a very good uh, position to be damaged and the Archon getting some good splash off. The Widowmines going off as well. One more Liberator still left over here as it's down to just a few Stalkers and a few Marauders left over once again at the end of this fight. It is just going to be Creator who is just about, I think, going to push this back. It's so close towards the end. It's kind of crazy how close it is. Those Liberators, if they just spread out a little bit, if they just stayed a little bit further back, that could have been the difference right then. To kind of um, change this game, as we're going to see a couple of medevacs loading up. They're going to go to the main base. No better time than now to actually go across towards that main base and try and get something done. That Widowmine picks up a few Stalker kills as them Stalkers rushed to get in position to protect against this drop. And now them Stalkers are out of position. Warpin's out of position too. As we're going to see, this fourth base is still the base that's under pressure as reinforcements streaming across the map here from time. He pushes up the ramp and here we go. Once again, another fight to try and give himself something in this game. These Stalkers are on the way back over. They're done thinking of, you know, this drop. It's obviously not coming. They're done pretending to deal with that as we're going to see Observer going to get picked off but it splashes onto the Metafax as the Widow Mines are the ones that do the damage to it. The Adept's going down though once again just another couple of mines going to get dealt with here and once again time is pushed away and time maybe just needs to take a moment to really just regroup get his forces together get ready to go into another fight which may be able to kind of really put an end to this game. So we're just going to be seeing Stalker's just going to start fighting once again these Liberators Looking to see also a position they might be able to get into. They're going to once again set themselves up. And again, they're in a nice position. Only two of them, though. So definitely engageable with the sort of lowest, you know, with this good stalk count. I mean, only two is not that scary. You're going to see one of these pounds getting picked off. That's annoying because that's normal warpings towards this fourth base now. So that's actually a bigger deal than it may initially look here. We're going to see another pound going down, and these Marines and Marauders continue to trade. Another Stalker goes down. Liberator hits another Adept, and we're going to see a lot of damage continuing to be done. We're going to see Stalkers and Adepts. Continuing to be under fire. Liberators going to un siege. They're going to move forward. I don't like this move though because now these stalkers are going to be able to take the Liberators down because there isn't that much bio left to kind of back them up. And once again, we're going to see time being pushed away by these stalkers, by these adepts. I'm just going to be seeing Creator. Just going to be um, pulling back once again. Marine Marauder, a few Widow Mines, and these Medivacs are again from time just collecting together. We're going to see this War Prism coming down south and coming just down south and coming in towards the main base soon there yeah, maybe it's actually relocated to the fourth base some time ago i was going to see liberator set up again i love this position again he creates sort of a you know an entire pathway where you have to fight into a liberator to get towards the terran player who otherwise is going to pick away at the fourth base widow mine's actually doing good damage in towards the mineral line a couple of probes going down to that i was going to see the liberators again are the ones that are really doing the damage here and Again, it's just hard, especially as the stalker count gets lower and lower. It's hard to keep on fighting against these liberators, you know? You just don't really have the numbers to keep on trading against them. We're going to see time picking off the fourth base. Will back away now. These adepts towards his fourth, though, are definitely going to be a little bit of a nuisance and something he has to try and deal with here in the next few minutes as we see marines stemming forward. We're looking to try and pick off the warp prism. We're going to see SCVs coming in surrounding these marines and marauder surrounding, no, not surrounding, but uh, continuing to fight here as well. Continue to work their way against these adepts. The adepts will get cleaned out. As we're going to see the Liberators will clean up that War Prism too. He pulls his entire army back to deal with this. As we actually see the rest of the army coming forward as well from Creator. And this is actually a pretty good fight for him to begin with. The Archon got some good shots off, but it's just sheer numbers. And sheer numbers are going the way of the Terran player, who is now 35 supply up in this game. It's the first time for a long time we've seen a player be at such a decisive supply advantage. Um, in fact, I think it's the first time we've seen um, 
I've been playing this game, but such a supply advantage. As we do see, this bio very cleverly stinned though, needs a few more medivacs. I would have loved it at some point. I know it's been a very low econ game for time, losing the third base early and so on, but you know, he it would have been nice to see him add a second star port because he really is struggling with continuing to build the brace and also at the same time be able to keep on building those medivacs and keep on healing this bio army. As we see another stim in towards the center, we're going to see this army is splitting on up. The Widow Mines are going to start burrowing. There's actually Storm coming into this army now from Creator. The Liberator Siege up. The Widow Mines begin to burrow. The split comes in from Creator. Is it going to be enough? I just don't think it will be with the bio and the Liberator Force doing so much damage in the skies. GG is called and time is going to be taking gain number one of this best of three. Anyways, let us talk about some more TVP because we've been waiting a little while to get into this. Uh, but finally all the issues are done this time. We actually have ourselves a game. Doesn't look as though we need a regame. And so we're gonna kick fingers off into the bottom right hand corner of the map. Our blue Protoss player from Jena Green Rings is gonna be Creator. And on the upper left hand side from X Team, our red town player is Time. Let me just finish my drink, guys, before. It's already, like, coldish. So let me just finish it before it's, like, stone cold. Alright, perfect. So, TVP Frozen Temple. I mean, this is one of the maps where you can get aggressive. And that's exactly uh, what we're going to be seeing right at the get-go from time. So, it's... Um, going to be kind of good double uh, double gas play which can lead into a lot of diff you know leads into a lot of different things you can do you can go for that fast factory it's generally going to be with a fast factory uh but widow mine drop very quickly you can go for a very fast liberator maybe just a very fast tank push there's a lot of different ways you can play this out so i like it i mean frozen temple definitely one of the maps this works on because of the shorter rush distance and because of the way you can sort of if you want to get a tank play you can siege up the ramp very easily you can siege up with a tank over here and hit the natural pylons for example there's a lot of different ways you can do this, it's generally very effective, and as Creator comes in, he will already see the factory. Um, and you'll see there's double gas, although right now, time isn't exactly rushing to mine a whole bunch of gas, you know, he's just got one single worker mining away on this uh, refinery here to the right-hand side. It's just one worker kind of mining away, and, um, yeah, I mean, he's got a lot of gas, but he'll, you know, he'll increase that gas income over the next couple of moments, and then he's going to be able to kind of go in towards... I mean, initially he's not going to necessarily need the double gas, I guess, which is why he's only mining with one worker, but he's ready to get that extra gas going, so you'll just make, like, a wooden mine, maybe a couple of Hellions to begin with, then the Starport, and then he'll, you know, want a Liberator, maybe a, you know, a Cyclone, I don't know. There's a lot of different possibilities um, as to how he does this. We're going to see Hellion on the way, Reactor finishes, and so a couple of Marines on the way out now. Again, just being one Marine into that Reactor, so... Again, still no one working that gas. I'd like to see him just put, um, it's, very it's a very kind of minor thing, but... Actually, if you uh, have four workers on gas, you should have two and two because you can see here's like that very slight delay of this SCV entering that gas because it's full. So it's actually slightly more effective if you've got four workers mining to have two and two instead of three and one. So, I mean, it's not a major difference, and I guess maybe that by the time he switch swaps it over or so, he might just lose more gas mining than he gains from that. Um, but still, just a little interesting fact for you guys, just in case you didn't know. As we see, well, there's just been one Hellion made now, would a mine on the way up. Uh, maybe in second Hellion behind this as well, yeah, Hellion already queued, so gonna be kind of a Widow Mine, and I imagine it's gonna be the Marines and the Widow Mine in the Medivac going across the map, and then it'll be the Hellions trying to run through at the same time. Now, Creator has just finished up a Stargate, and honestly, I feel a Stargate is one of the best ways you can kind of open to defend this sort of um, aggression. I feel as though a lot of um, aggressive one base strategies by the Terran is, are generally shut down by Stargate play, you know, with the Phoenix, um, you know, they're able to lift up Widow Mines and shut them down. They can lift up feet and, you know, Hellions as well very quickly. Just in general, the Stargate play is a very good way to slow down the kind of aggression they can hunt down the Medivac as well. So it really limits what exactly the Terran player can get up to in the game. Not really this first Phoenix, just going to sit on the ramp. We're going to see a second Phoenix now starting. So one Phoenix from now, and that'll probably be used. It depends how he wants to use this. Maybe to lift up the Widow Mine, because he doesn't have any detection just yet. Stalkers will target that down, but the uh, Stalkers are taking a lot of damage in the meantime. As we see these Marines... Just hunting down that Stalker. The second Stalker taking damage too, and oh dear. Creator doesn't quite have enough just yet. That being said, ah, it's just the Stalkers. He's really overcommitted to trying to, you know, defend here with these, um, I don't I know, like, defend, I mean, not really defend, but like, he's really overcommitted to kind of doing damage with these Stalkers. As we're going to see these uh, probes, so many of them going down. Creator takes a huge amount of damage from the natural. 13 workers killed. This army's still here. Yes, the Medivac is very low. It will go down now. 
I mean, he's still training, you know, he's picking off another, uh, you know, he's picked off another stalker or so at the very end. Finally, he has cleaned up, but wow. 13 workers killed. I mean, let's just look at everything that was killed off there. 13 workers and 3 stalkers for the med you know, for all of those units that we talked about early. And that's definitely the sort of trade which uh, time is looking for. As back at home, his command center is about to finish up. He's got a bunker on the way to help him defend. And that liberator follow-up now coming in too. But the phoenix on top of it already. I feel as though when you see the stargate. Uh, star, yeah, the stargate. That's maybe just worth kind of uh, cancelling the liberator. If you can cancel it in time. I mean, I, I kind of feel as though you probably saw... The Phoenix in time. Uh, I just feel as though you either cancel it or keep it at home defensively because it's not really going to do very much across the map if there's Phoenix out, or there's very low chance of it doing a lot across the map if there's Phoenix out. However, Tank Liberator now here and he's going to hold his natural very easily, and so Creator can have a hard time breaking this if he really wants to try and go for it. He does have a pile on up. He's sending his Mothership Core and Probe back home. I mean, the Phoenix, what can they achieve? Well, they can't really shoot the Liberator down because there's a bunker nearby, and so the Phoenix are likely to take too much damage before they take the Liberator down. Same if they're kind of lifting up the tank. If they lift up the tank, they're going to take a lot of damage from the Marines in the bunker. So I don't think there's really a way for Creator to fight into this, and I think he feels the same. He's going to take that third base instead. He drops down the Twilight Council now over in his natural expansion. Got more Phoenix just coming out. Just going to be coming up the left-hand side. Just going to be joining together here. So again, just... Continue going to this Phoenix Cat. I mean, this is only free. Okay, we'll see if he goes up to the kind of 5, 6 number, which is kind of more standard. It uh, looks as though he's just sort of using these to kind of control the left side of the map right now. Uh, with 5 or 6, you can generally kind of get in there and start doing a couple of, you know, a little bit of damage here, a little bit of damage there, you know, with, you know lifting up a few of these SCVs. And just, you know, just getting a little bit done, but he's obviously just looking for map control. He wants to make sure he doesn't see, you know, allow any drops to get across the map without seeing them. And that's exactly what this is doing right now by patrolling these stalkers around. Uh, by presuming his phoenix around, he's not looking to get damage done, just control the map. Which is, uh, which is nice, so... Do you see how this sets up as steam combat shields comes in for our Terran? Dark Shrine and Resonating Glaives. The uh, tech choice is right now out of creator. We just saw a scan coming down from time, um, I believe. Maybe in the main base, I'm not sure what exactly that was. I think it must have been in the main base, but maybe not. Uh, I think so, because I don't think there's any reason he should have seen this pylon otherwise. I guess the Hellions went in there, maybe. I just heard a scam. I'm being a bit useless, aren't I? Anyways, um, yeah, we're going to see. I mean, you can see time right here. He's in a position where he's just not going to die anytime soon if he stays in this position. He is going to move out, though. So, time going to load up his tanks. He's going to uh, start moving across the map. And, yeah, you know what? I kind of like this. You know, he's got this. He keeps his Liberator alive against the Stalkers. This can turn out quite nice. You're going to see one Adept moving forward. Says he left the depot. It doesn't matter, actually. There's a gap in the wall anyway, so... A little bit of a uh, misplaced ball there, as we're going to see this army coming across the map. You can see Creator pulling back now. Still a lot of map control up to this top side. He's uh, got that war prism ready to come in as well in a few moments. As we're going to see, well then, Phoenix can obviously look to try and add something on here. Sentries will have force fields available. Stim is also finished, though, and that's something you've got to keep in mind here. As we're going to see, time finds a way to move up this ramp. You're going to see the tanks able to come in here as well. Libra is sieging up on top of the army, which might seem a little bit weird, but it means if a depth shade in, he's going to be very ready to kind of fight against, you know, those are deaths with shade on top of the Marines and Marauders. This third base just going to go straight down. What a follow-up from time. Really kind of well executed here uh, with his timings and, you know, it's a very strong time where you know, right now Creator is not ready to fight at all. He's down a plus one upgrade. It's very difficult for him to attack into this. I'm just going to be seeing uh, time continue to move forwards and we're going to see these tanks going to drop off once again and oh my god, that pile is going to go down so quickly. DTs though could be the saviors because there isn't a scan just yet. There's one scan. Where's the scan back at home? Oh no, DTs back at home. He needs one more scan across the map because otherwise he's just going to lose so much at the front. There's the scan. Finally the DTs get cleaned out. Is it enough from Creator? We're going to see this natural expansion will fall. The DTs across the map still doing damage though. Turret building so he won't need more scans at home. But we can just see, you know, one more DT whooping in over here could do so much. But the Dark Shrine going to be unpowered in a moment. Three DTs on the map. They're all across the map, if I'm not mistaken. One, two, maybe there's one over here. And we're going to see a couple of tanks getting lifted up in range of an overcharge. And Creator is starting to clean this up. Maybe a little bit overzealous there by time. There's that one extra DT that is over in this side of the map. We are going to be seeing just uh, try and boost away. We're going to see the Liberator will be chased down. And, well, time loses a lot. As Creator tries to rebuild an expansion over to the left-hand side on where his fourth base should be. So trying to rebuild his base over to the left here now. And we're all just going to be seeing... I mean, Time obviously in major retreat mode. Finally, another scan comes down. He's finally dealing with these Dark Templar. All said and done, he does sit on two bases against what will very soon be two bases again. 
uh, I would say Times may be in a slight advantage here then, because he still has that plus one upgrade as well, remember, so that's definitely still going to come into play, and he's still playing kind of Stim Bio against very low-tech Protoss now, because it's not like the Protoss player can afford a lot more tech units, just very basic gamer units, because he's very limited on gas income, this natural expansion which is coming back up, or, well, this one here, I mean, Eva Base, which is coming up, doesn't have gases readily available just yet, so... I kind of like this moving out for time. He also picked off that Dark Shrine, and so Kareda loses a lot of potential for reinforcing the kind of harassment across the map. And that was one of the things that was going very well for him. As we're going to see, ho oh, oh, ho oh, ho, that Phoenix is so low. Just surviving here towards the very end as Marine after Marine goes down. We're going to see a few adepts here. We're going to see already though. Time Stim and Fours. He's going to go for this. He's going to start trading. Marauders at the front to do that tanking. We're going to see the adepts. They do commit forwards. The Marines. They are going to go down. We are just going to have to see a lift and a departure out of time. Because he can't stick around here, and then he runs into these Phoenix, so he has to be careful once again when the Marines come forwards. And then Phoenix are low on health, so they can't stick around for too long at all as creator. I'm just going to sit back, and, well, creator's very soon going to be up on free bases again, though. He really needs to get this gas going. He's actually got a lot of gas banked right now, um, but he's still only building kind of adepts and so on, you know. He's building a Phoenix, too. He really needs to make sure he's making enough, as I think Tiny needs to be careful as well, though. I mean, I see what he's doing, I see what he's, you know, I see what he's seeing for himself here, but... He needs to be careful because, he, I mean, against these Phoenix especially, he might not, he, you know, he might just not have enough to sort of fight. I'm going to be seeing the, um, he is just kind of sitting around here for Kareda, just kind of, it's kind of weird. I mean, if Time knew about this base to the left, he'd stop attacking to the natural and he'd start pulling Kareda a bit out of position, maybe a drop to the natural while he hits the main base with the, well, hits the fourth base here. Let's say the fourth base, but, you know, in the fourth location with the rest of his army. Another couple of medivacs, more marines coming across the map. I mean, this bioforces against larger does get scarier. We still only see a death, but they do have resonating glaives. Well, creators are going to see a little bit of a fight starting up here, and a few more marines from the back sort of coming in as well. Phoenix trying to help by lifting up a few units. Stalker's been targeted down, and uh, the last few adepts do shade forwards. Is there going to be enough for two more Marines coming in? Phoenix still trying to lift up whatever they can. The Mothership Core High Energy goes down now. Still a few Phoenix in the sky, but that's about it. As one last minute, fact, just about surviving that Mazorka being chased is going to fall as well. And now the Phoenix are kind of one of the only things that are really scary in the sky still. But adepts coming in, pros being pulled, and... Wow, one more Phoenix going to get targeted at the very end. Doesn't quite go down. And again, Kareda will hold on as Time Sims in a few more Marines. Still fighting here. As we're going to see the deaths once again coming in. But wow, Time just keeps on picking off these units. And I don't know if there's enough for Kareda. I've been saying this for a little while. He's kept kind of making holds here. And well, there's another warping of adepts. I guess I'll do it for just a few more moments. Remember, Kareda's up on three bases. Only 37 for episode to 35 SCVs. Uh, the work is right now not oversaturated too much by uh Time, so the income should actually be fairly even. Oh, well, actually, Creator's killing it in income. Um, okay. So, Creator's got a really good income advantage. You can see it down here. He's not mining as much gas, though, which is where that mineral boost is coming from. So, that's one of the issues I have. Creator just maybe doesn't need the gas, but, again, eventually, this kind of lower-tech army definitely goes the way of the Terran player. However, Terran doesn't have many medivacs left over, or any energy on those medivacs, so... And they're still pretty close. Plus one armor about to finish. I think, at this point, Time wants to just get back home regroup a little bit better and maybe just float yeah the main base down to the third so you can really get some more mining going for himself we're gonna see him turning and trading here yeah, good marine count to fight against those adepts and still it's just the uh, base to the left hand side which time has no idea about it's this base right here which is really really causing him just a couple of issues we're gonna see stimming up this ramp once again the adepts start to move forwards wouldn't mind burrow straight away gets targeted down very quickly though the one one upgrades you can see the difference they're making though However, adjust the north side, gonna start changing this fight a little bit. Time still trying to fight towards the very end. The Phoenix are still lifting units one at a time in the skies, and the Adepts are still just about going to carry him through. Another Adept goes down. It's so close on the ground with just one le Adept left over from Kareda. Again, these Phoenix are really kind of playing their role in the game, paying for themselves. This one Phoenix, he has nine kills on it. I mean, yeah, when there's some Marauders and Marines, they're expensive kills. We're going to see, oh, the Winnipeg gets lifted. I was about to say it's going to go off in the Phoenix, but no, Creator has that Observer overhead, so it can lift that up, get rid of it very quickly. Get rid of it very quickly indeed. More units joining towards the center of the map. This base now up for time means that he's got a little bit of better saturation. His income should be looking a little bit healthier. He's still mining. Well, actually, it's still, it's still even, but Creator's still mining just that little bit more, which makes up for the fact he's not trading as well in these fights because of the upgrades and so on. As we're going to see, this time the Phoenix are fighting on their own, which is not ideal, and the Phoenix start to get targeted down. Now these Adepts coming into play, but man, those uh, Phoenix taking some heavy damage there. Two or three of them going down, but once again, Time finds himself being pushed back, being pulled all the way back towards the upper left. 
As you see, what's this? Just a couple of adepts, a couple of adepts in towards the bases. Just trying to pick up a couple of SCVs, and again, time just does not know about this base to the left hand side. The forge is over here as well. I mean, time just needs to start thinking to himself, why are you still in this game? How are you still reproducing? You know, how do you have so much? And you know, he has to start figuring out that there's another base in this map, and he can only do that by kind of injuration, you know, checking for that. I mean, creating now making another expansion, that still take him up to four bases here. As we're going to be seeing this Adept count, this Phoenix count from Creator just looking so, so good right now. Finally, time's taking a moment or two to just back off, rebuild a little bit, really regroup his army. I feel as though these scrappy battles have been helping out Creator, who's got the war pins on his side of the map, has been able to lift up a few years with Phoenix. It's, um, I definitely think these sort of little fights have been uh, favoring the uh, Pro player to some extent, as we see. Just going to be kind of, uh, especially because the cross players just had that extra economy that we've not seen out of the Terran player. You see this Widowmine Burrow, do we see commitment in here? I kind of feel like we might because I feel if he doesn't, we're going to get this sort of situation uh, which is kind of weird where we might see the Terran finding that kind of hidden base. As we're going to see these Marines still doing a very good job of training. Very hard to see what exactly is going on here. There's still some Adepts left but there's so many Marines on the ground. And it's the Marines on the ground that are finally going to power through. This is what we've been expecting to see for so long in this game. GG from Creator. Time is going to take game number two eventually.